Today I'm going to show you how you can fake camera movements in Final Cut Pro to create a sequence like this. I was so lucky to get that shot with the truck driving over the bridge and the birds comes flying under it in the same direction. It just looks so dynamic. Faking camera movements in Final Cut Pro is actually really, really simple. And I've been out lately trying to shoot a lot of time lapses of the sunsets and the sunrises here in Gothenburg. And when you're shooting a time lapse, you just basically rig up your camera on a tripod and then record and let it stand there for like 30 minutes. And you don't really get any panning motion or anything like that. And if you follow me on Instagram, then you've probably seen all those like quick edits that I've done and posted onto my Instagram story. And I'm shooting all my time lapses in 4K, and that means that it gives me more flexibility to change the scale of the clip and position of the clip when I jump into Final Cut Pro. Before I show you how it's done, I'm just gonna say welcome to all the new people that have joined in here. You guys are amazing. And to all of you that has been here for a while, thank you so much for the support that I'm getting from you guys. You rock. And if this is your very first time watching me, then you might wanna consider hitting that subscribe button because, you know, that'd be appreciated. So, let's jump into Final Cut Pro and I'll show you how it's done. Alright, so we've got all the clips that we want to use in our timeline in Final Cut Pro and we're gonna do some changes to a couple of these because we want to give it a more dynamic feeling to those shots that are shot on a tripod. So we're gonna start off with the first clip here where we have the crane in the foreground and the smoke in the distance and I want to give it a little bit of like zooming out feeling so it feels a little bit more dynamic. So to do that we're gonna make sure that we are in the beginning of the clip and then we're gonna go up here to the right and then we're gonna hit the scale keyframe and we're gonna press add a keyframe and then we're gonna go up to 115 I think. Maybe that's a little bit too much. We're gonna take it 110. You don't wanna add too much of the zoom because then it's just gonna feel unnatural when you're watching it. So we're gonna make sure that it's a slow but noticeable zoom. I think 110 is fine. So we're gonna go to the end of the clip and then we're gonna hit arrow back. So make sure that we've got the right clip. And then we're gonna add another keyframe here and we're gonna set it back to a hundred. So if we play this back, you can see that we got a little bit of zooming out going on in the clip and it already feels much more dynamic than without the zoom. So the other clip that I wanna add some camera movement to is the one with the truck driving towards the sun. I wanna track the truck to make sure that it goes in the middle of the frame straight in front of the sun. So to do that, we're gonna mark the clip. We're gonna make sure that we are in the beginning and then we're gonna zoom in here. We're gonna zoom in to maybe 100 and 170 is fine, I think. And then we're gonna mark the position. This is an important one. We're gonna add a keyframe to the position, not the scale. The scale is only changed so that we can move the clip without it going out of frame. So we're gonna set a keyframe for the position. And then we're gonna choose the X axis and we're gonna drag it so that the truck is in the middle somewhere around here, I think like 919. And then we're gonna go to the end of the clip and then we're gonna drag the X position again so that the truck is in the middle of the frame once again, right there. So if you play this back, it actually looks really, really good. But as you can see in the beginning and in the end of the clips, it feels like it's, ugh, it's not just keeping up with the trucks because it has this like fade in on the movement that we just added. So to change that, we're gonna go and choose this button, which is the transform. And then we're gonna mark the arrow here. We're gonna right click this. We're gonna choose linear. And then we're gonna choose this one as well. And we're gonna choose linear here too. So when we play that back, you can see that now it's actually moving the exact same speed that the truck is moving. And it feels like we've got a really nice panning motion on that clip. I also wanna change the last clip that we got in this sequence to make sure that we give it a little bit of like dolly zoom. So to do that, we're just gonna mark the clip. We're gonna set a keyframe at the scale. And then we're gonna jump to the end of the clip again and then we're gonna hit a keyframe back and then we're gonna set it to 
145 because now we want the zoom to be more apparent so it matches with the drone's movement. So now we have a really nice dolly zoom feeling to that end drone clip. And there you go. That is how you fake camera movements in Final Cut Pro. I really hope that this video was helpful and if it was make sure you give it a thumbs up because it does make a difference. If you like this video make sure you hit that subscribe button as well because that would be appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take care. If you're watching, you've watched all the way until the end of this video, so thank you for that. I'm gonna give you the Swedish word of the day as well. Tripod is kamerastativ. Now you know. See ya.